there are always obstacles in a glass house. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm Professor Matthew Dickinson from the University of Nottingham and I'm Professor of uh, Plant Pathology here, which essentially means that the work I do is on diseases of plants. The particular diseases that I'm doing a lot of work on at the moment is a group of organisms known as phytoplasmas. It's actually insects that pick up these bacteria from one plant and then they transmit them to another plant to spread the disease that way. Uh, up in the corner over there is a plant called napier grass or elephant grass. Elephant grass, the name implies it's quite tall, it's, yeah, elephants can hide in it. Um, when it's infected by the particular group of diseases that we're working with, it causes a disease known as a napier grass stunt, which is this, quite a, di a dramatic difference in size and hence quite a difference uh, in, in yield and quite a big difference in the amount of foodstuffs for the animals. So phytoplasmas themselves, the kind of symptoms that they will often cause in plants is, apart from the dwarfing that the uh, napier grass stunt is doing, one of their other classic symptoms is that they change the, uh, the, the way the plant develops. We do a lot of work in an experimental plant which is known as a Mad Madagascan periwinkle, which is this plant a uh, nice relatively bushy plant with some nice flowers on it. What phytoplasmas do to plants is they cause a range of symptoms including phyllidae which is where the flowers change back into leaves. Now you can kind of see this in process on this plant where you can see that the flowers are starting to change and turn green and convert into leaf-like structures and eventually what this plant will do is it will turn into a plant which has no flowers at all. We've been doing quite a bit of work on these diseases in various parts of the world. Um, we've worked on a number of them in, uh, on, on, on coconuts in uh, parts of uh, West Africa where they cause a very significant disease known as uh, lethal yellows where essentially they do what the name implies the coconut trees die and so that's quite a major impact on food production. We've also done a little bit of work in Oman where they have a disease known as Lyme uh, which is broom. So this is on their um, sour lime trees so you get the normal, instead of getting the normal lime production you end up with plants which are very different, very low yielding and this is quite a significant problem in part of the Middle East, in Oman, in o Iran and in parts of the, uh, the Emirates. So these things are yeah, widespread different diseases and we've worked on a lot of different ones. We have been developing uh, diagnostic methods to be able to detect phytoplasmas rapidly uh, in the field um, so that you could go out into the field with a small amount of apparatus and go at a look at a plant which may or may not be infected and do a quick assay on that plant to see if it has got a phytoplasma in it and if so which one it's got so that we can then start to look at the epidemiology, the spread of these phytoplasmas, which ones occur in which parts of the world. So the technique that we've actually got is a very simple one which essentially involves uh, an extraction bottle and you take a little bit of the plant material, so you just take a little bit of leaf and you put it into the extraction bottle and extract the DNA by shaking the bottle for a couple of minutes. So a couple of minutes of shaking and that extracts the, uh, the, the sap from the leaf sample into the buffer. That buffer has enough DNA in it and it is clean enough for then using in this DNA amplification method that we use. The amplification itself then takes place in some uh, reaction tubes which would have the reagents in them. So these would be set up in a laboratory in advance. They would have the diagnostic test kit for the particular pathogen we're trying to detect. We would add our DNA samples into these tubes and then the machine that we use is this uh, small portable battery operated machine and essentially we put our, our tubes, once they've been uh, filled up, we put these into the machine, close up the lid and then the machine itself will record the data in real time and it will give us the results within 30 minutes. So we'll be able to see if we've got any amplification of our pathogen from that DNA sample. So what we're looking at here is amplification of DNA. As you can see the amplification of this particular product has occurred at about 15 minutes. So 15 minutes into the assay amplification started to occur on the positive samples. The other samples were negative for that particular uh, diagnostic test. I'm particularly interested in the interactions between plants and microbes. The fact that, they, I mean, 
Plants are a host for many, many different microbes, bacteria, viruses, fungi, all sorts of different things. And it's looking at those interactions and how certain microbes are able to interact with certain plants and then what they do to those plants. I think so is an area that I find really quite fascinating. Um, as part of the work, I mean, as part of the work that I do, a lot of this work is to do with these bacterial diseases, which are not particularly common in the UK, but are common in uh, other parts of the world. So from my point of view, it does then give you an opportunity to then see how agricultural systems work in other parts of the world, see what the significant problems are in other parts of the world, and be able to work with people in other parts of the world to look at their, uh, their diseases and to look at ways of managing these diseases. So you can quite get a really interesting insight into Agricultural systems in somewhere like Ghana are very different to agricultural systems in the UK and you can have a look at uh, you know, kind of to impress on people how things could develop in, in time and how they could improve their agricultural practices.